Come on, church, well, no matter where you are, if you know that he's worthy to be praised, come on and just put your hands together and give him the best praise that you can give him. I know you may be in your homes right now, but hey, it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and give God the praise. If you got to bang some pans together, if you got to hit the table, whatever you need to do, to let the Lord know that you're grateful and you're so thankful for what he has done and what he is doing in your life. Come on and give him a good old-fashioned praise right now. Amen, amen, amen. First Christian, how are you feeling this morning? Facebook family and friends, how are you feeling this morning? Can I be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? And I, I, I think there will be many of you who feel the same way. Man, I feel like I live 365 days in one week. This was the longest, longest few days in my entire life. The pressure of it, even on Tuesday night, I kept looking and then I kept turning it off because, you know, I started getting that sinking feeling that 2016 was going to be on a repeat. And I'm going to tell you, all during the night, I was just listening and praying and I didn't sleep at all. I didn't sleep at all. Then I finally turned the TV off. And I was like, okay, Lord, whichever way this goes, I know you got us, but I hope you know, I pray and hope we gonna, it's going to turn out differently. And when I flipped the TV back on at 6 o'clock and saw that it had not been called, I was like, whoo, okay, we got a shot. But anyway, anyway, I'm just grateful that things turned out the way that they did. And I believe that it was because it was um, that we were so, many of us were really had so much anxiety and stress about this is because it was so much riding on this, on this election. And you, like all many of us and myself, it's like we didn't feel like we had enough energy to do another four years. It's like we just didn't have enough. We didn't have a, enough mental capacity. We didn't have enough physical strength to, to do another four. But even in the midst of that, we, even though we didn't feel that way, I was, my prayer was, my God, your grace is sufficient. And so now no matter what it will be, that you will give us the grace to sustain us through the storm. So it was, it was before the election was called that God laid it on our hearts to, you know what, we're going to put what we regular, our regular scheduled Sunday morning service layout and program to the side. And we want to call our partners and our friends to come together for a time of prayer. We needed to pray regardless who went in office. And, and even though this election went the way that we had prayed and hoped for, it doesn't mean that we're to take our foot off the pedal of prayer, but we got to keep pressing in even harder. Because one thing we have to do, understand and keep in mind, that the enemy does not like giving up territory. And he will do whatever he has to do to hold on to his territory. So we got to keep, keep sending up the timber. We got to keep being, keep being in prayer and, and still continue to represent Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And so we've just been calling together. We've, called, we've come together for a time of prayer. And so we're going to ask you, um, partners and friends, that for this moment, if you wouldn't mind making some sacrifices, and that is, we understand that sometimes when our service is going on, you got us on mute and you're still going about your morning activities and rituals. We're just going to ask you, if you're preparing breakfast right now, would you mind turning the stove off? We're just going to ask you if there's a TV going on in the background, would you mind just turning that off or turning the radio down and, and ask you that if you would just gather your family into your room, into the sanctuary of your home, into your room, if we would come together for a time of prayer. We'll just ask you that if you live alone or where, whoever, that you go to the place where you usually meet the Lord, where you have your devotion and take us with you because we want to go in with a clear heart and a clear mind and we want to settle our spirits right now that we go before the Lord because this is a serious time, a moment of prayer as we come together. We're just praying. So this morning we're going to pray for our nation praying for the unity of our nation. God will heal the divide that we are experiencing. But before we get to that, we're going to pray for our, our emotions, our 
ment- our, 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 how am I going to say this? The, our sanity. I'm just going to cut it straight to it. Because when we, when, when, before you go into prayer, and sometimes you just got to ask the Lord to settle your heart and spirit. And so we got to be still for a moment. And so we're going to pray that, that God will just meet us and, and, and pray us through our, some of our anxiety and, and stress that we have been carrying for so long. And again, we're going to pray for our nation. We're going to pray for President-elect Biden. And we're going to pray for President Trump. We're going to pray, um, after that, that we're going to pray for the coronavirus issue because that is still, as those numbers are increasing in our state, they are increasing, and we need to be attentive to that as we approach in the holiday season. You're not supposed to have more than 10 people in your home during this holiday season. Remember that, because we have some responsibility in our healing as well and keeping ourselves safe. And then we're going to be praying for the unity of our churches, the church universal. Amen? So come together now as we prepare to pray. Bring in Minister um, Janine will be coming forward as she will now pray for us to deal with our anxiety and the calmness of our spirit. Minister Janine. Amen. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. Come on and declare that with me. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. Not will be good, but he is good. Even though the results went the way we wanted, if they did not, the Lord is good. And if God be for us, if God be for us, let's get that in your spirit. If God be for us, then it does not matter what it is we come up against. If God be for us, I'll change it like this. Since God be for us, he's more than the world against for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever and ever and ever and ever. He's good when it feels good and he's good when it feels bad for the Lord is good. We thank you, God. We thank you, Father God. For the Lord is good. If you would meet me in Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31, a familiar passage of scripture. And it reads as such. I will be reading from the New International Version. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom for he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak for even youths grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall but those who hope, those who wait, those who hope, those who wait in and on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not be faint heavenly father we thank you for the declaration of your word heavenly father we thank you for being the sovereign one the holy one the all-knowing one the omnipotent one the all-powerful one we thank you father god that you sit high and look low we thank you that your understanding is beyond us what you do and how you do what you do is beyond us but yet you still love us father god we thank you that you're the master of the throne we thank you that you're the king of the universe we thank you that you are lord of everything and over all we thank you that in these trying times we can stake our comfort in you knowing that you will never fail that you will never leave us that you will always keep us father god that you would not leave us comfortless father god we thank you for being you all by yourself you don't need our 
our help. You don't need any help or support. You are all you are needing to be in this hour. So we lean into that before we go forward with any request or petition. We must honor you for who you are the great I am, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. You are the God who was and is and is to come. You are that you are. Who can question your authority? We thank you for being mighty. We thank you for being great. We thank you for being gracious. We thank you for being merciful. We thank you for being good to us. We thank you for being better than we could ever be to ourselves. We thank you that you're better than good, oh God. If I could get grammatically incorrect, I'd say you're just gooder than good. You're, you're gooder than good. You're greater than great, oh God. Who? We stand in awe of you. We stand in awe of you. We, we stand in awe of your authority. We, we stand in awe of your sovereignty. We, we stand in awe in you. And so right now in this moment, we set our eyes on you. We fix our focus on you. We make you the fixture of this moment. Knowing that if you did it before, you can do it again. Since you've done it before, you will certainly do it again. For you are not man that you would lie, nor are you the son of man that you would have to repent. So if you said it, then that settles it. And every promise of you that you've spoken is yes and amen. Yes, and it is so and so. We thank you for that. We, we find rest in knowing that you are just who you said you'd be. We, we find rest in knowing that you are who we need you to be. You're the great protector. You're the great provider, Father God. And so we thank you, oh God. And we ask that in the midst of everything we're going through, that you would begin to saturate our minds right now. We, we pray that the mind of Christ would be in each of us right now. The mind of Christ to take into captivity any thought, any high thing that would seek to exalt itself above the truth of who you are. We, we need the mind of Christ right now in the name of Jesus to combat every naysaying thing, every doubtful thing, every worrisome thing, every stressful thing. We need the mind of Christ, oh God. We ask that you would give it to us right now, oh God. That you would begin to calm our spirits and saturate our atmosphere, Father God. That, that you would continue to remind us that greater is he that lives in us than he that is in the world. And so even though the world feels overwhelming, even though the world feels daunting and overwhelming, Father God, it cannot overtake we, the people of God. Let us rest in knowing that we pull on you, that you have not left us comfortless. You have not left us without resource, Father God. So give us the spirit of wisdom to tap into the resources that you've given us on today. Let us pull into your word, Father God. Let us glean from the scripture, Father God, even now in the name of Jesus that says be anxious for no thing. Be anxious for no thing, but with prayer and supplication we make our requests known unto you. And so we say we need you now. We need you now. We need you now. So we cast our cares. We cast all anxiety. We cast all worry. We cast all doubt. We cast all shame. We cast it off of us, oh God. Doing what you've commanded us to do. For this is not the hour for us to shrink back, oh God. But give us the ability to lean in. Give us the ability to occupy and, and take hold of the authority that you have given us. And let us not forget our youth. Let us not forget our young people. Let us not forget what they are going through. For even as the word has said, even youths grow tired and weary. Even young men will stumble and fall. So it's not just we adults who are going through. Our youth and our young adults are going through, Father God. So we ask for the spirit of wisdom to show us how to show them to tap into the authority that they have. Uh, to use the words of prayer right now in the name of Jesus to command their environment and to take hold of every emotion and to begin to speak to that emotion and tell them, you got to go because my God says that I am able to
to do exceedingly and abundantly according to the power that rests in me, oh God. So because you live in me, I will not live in fear. Show us how to arm our youth, how to fight effectively in this hour. Show them how to get down on their knees and maintain a posture of prayer making use of every tool and resource. We thank you. We thank you that we're not a stagnant people. We're not a stifled people. No, no, no. We're a resourceful people. We're a resourceful people, and we are tapping into the source. For you are our source. You are our source, and you speak peace, peace that surpasses all understanding peace that undergirds, peace that guides, peace that mobilizes, peace that encourages, peace that gives us hope, peace that gives us the ability to persevere, peace that gives us the ability to endure. We thank you for your peace that surpasses everything that confounds and confuses us. We thank you that all we need to do is just speak the word. And you were yet before us. All we need is to declare your word. And you were yet before us. Yeah, you are. You are the living God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, young people and youths, uh, uh, those under the sound of my voice, begin to open up your mouth and, and speak lovingly of your father. Begin to invite him into this moment. Yeah, you are the great I am. You you are the one who is and is to come. You, you We thank you, Father God, that even though we're stressed, even though we're worried, we can cast it before you. For we welcome the great exchange, our fear for your peace, our anxiety for your calm. We thank you for the great exchange. We thank you, Father God, and even now, I anoint every voice, every, every person who is under the sound of my voice. I cover their ears and their eyes, every ear gate, every eye gate right now in the name of Jesus. I cover it with your Holy Spirit that nothing will come in contrary to convince them that they need to be derailed from you, oh God. That they are covered by you right now in the name of Jesus. Touch your ears and touch your eyes that everyone under the sound of my voice, their ear gates are covered, their eye gates are covered, Father God. That they will perceive as you desire them to perceive, Father God. That they will see things as they are and not as they would seem to be in this realm, oh God. That they would be gifted with the spirit of wisdom even now to discern everything that seeks to infiltrate their environment even now in the name of Jesus we speak peace over their environment we speak peace in their mind and their soul for it is well in our souls because our flesh is made obedient to our soul so because it's well in our souls it is well in our environment and so we rise up with the authority we rise up in the authority we rise up in the authority to command the environment around us to shift even now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that your will will be done, even beyond the moment. We thank you for the authority that you reminded us of, even in this moment. And we declare your will to be done in our lives. Our mind, body, soul, speech aligned with that truth. In Jesus' most precious name I pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister. Janine for that prayer to renew our strength. If you would, turn with me to Romans chapter 12. 
and verse 18. In this text, we find the Apostle Paul known to many of them as Saul is now at the early stages of his mission. And you know when you are on a mission for the Lord, everybody don't like you. But my brothers and sisters, it's not what or how people treat you. It's how you show them how you like to be treated. And in verse 18, he says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, Live peaceably with all men. Now we need to understand some of you would highlight if. But God knows the if. And our efforts to live peaceably with everybody. One of the things that I saw yesterday that overpowered everything, because this, yes, this past year I've been working on a brother. Um, some of you are, some folk have been addicted to many things. I've been addicted to MSNBC. And one of the things that I saw, Pastor Kay, in Philadelphia, when the announcement came, they put the spotlight on some of the Trump supporters and the Biden supporters, and they came together and they were praying. That's what God could see. And the media don't say a whole lot about that, but it stood for something. And my assignment today is to pray for a divided nation. You know, division just didn't start in 2020. Division didn't even start in the 1500s. But they tell me Minister Daphne, that in glory, it was a division that Lucifer got beside himself. And so it is today. It's nothing strange. Hebrews 12, 14 says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Psalms 33 and 12 said, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. But I like this. I like this. My brother and your brother, John, while on the Isle of Patmos, John saw a river of pure water of life. And he says in Revelations 22 and 2, he says, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there a tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month. And this is what I like. And the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. Healing, 
is going to come, y'all. For divided we fall, but united we stand. We can disagree, but we don't have to be disagreeable. Yes, we've got to pray for those who don't agree with us, who do, for those who don't look like us. Would you allow me to say there was a point in time that we were derided from Christ. We did not always recognize him. There was a time that there was a, a great gulf between mankind and the Father. And the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, to bridge that gap that we can come to him. In my prayer, I thought about how down through the years, life has just not been fair. But yet, Grandmama prayed. Granddaddy kept getting up. Wasn't always recognized because of the color of the skin, but yet God moved in the midst of a divided nation. Pastor K was in my spirit that in praying for that God would move in the midst of a divided nation. Thank you, worship team, because it's time for worship. The nation needs to see worship. My prayer is this, and I didn't, I, I didn't have to uh, think of it. I didn't have to wonder it. My mind went to this, um, Pastor K. It's been on my heart uh, 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 when uh, I had to celebrate on, on yesterday. I just, uh, I just felt, I, I felt good. Y'all don't know. I, I I had a spiritual cleaning out. Whew. And this was my prayer. Allow me. Some of you, I didn't make this up. I didn't make this up. Y'all don't know this. Y'all don't know this. But to him, this pen, these words, and this will be my prayer. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessings. He chastens and hastens his will to make known. The wicked oppressing now cease from distressing, sing praises to his name. He forgets not his own. Beside us to guide us. Our God with us joining, ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning. Thou, Lord, was at our side. All glory be thine. And this is it right here. This is the climax that we all do expect all thee, thou leader triumphant, and pray that thou still our defender will be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation. Thy name be praised. O Lord, make us free. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
turn your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. Another familiar passage as we continue to go to the Lord in prayer. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. And the scripture says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. My prayer is for our President-elect, Joe Biden, because as they said, the work starts not with the celebration, but with the first notice. And anyone that's been in any type of leadership position, you know that it takes everything to be an effective leader. But to lead those who may not be in agreement with you will take a different type of character. And our president-elect is not in the situation where he can bow out or just focus on those that are for him. When you're in a leadership role, you have to lead those who may not want to be led. And that's we're going to pray that he will be able to do that effectively. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, first of all, thanking you that we have the opportunity to come to you directly, Lord. We come on behalf of President-elect Joe Biden, asking, Lord, that you will bless his family, that they will continue to lift him up even more than before, because he has a great task in front of him to lead your people. We pray that his family will surround him with prayers, with love, with support, because he will need it every day that he is in that office. And then, Lord, for him, we pray that you will give him strength. Regardless of what he's done before in the past, yes, those things have allowed him to be in the position that he is in today, but what he is about to do on January 20th is nothing that he's ever faced before in his life. Yes, he's seen it from the number two side, but it's nothing like being in the hot seat. Give him the strength, Father God, everything that he's going to need. Strength that he didn't even know that he has because he will need it to lead this nation. Father, we ask that you will give him wisdom. Help him, Father God, when he has to make those tough decisions. When he's the last one in the room, Yes, he will have a VP to talk to, but Lord, when it's time to make that decision, it's only him. And I pray, Lord, that the last voice he will hear be one of your voice. Because then we know that he will be making it in the right mindset. And then, Lord, we pray that you allow him to lead with humility. For, Father God, the greatest leaders are those that serve others and never serve themselves. Allow him to stay humble, Father God, from the first day to, to the last. Allow him to understand, Father God, that it's not about him, but it's always about those he serves. And with that in mind, Lord, help him to be a servant leader, a leader that doesn't mind rolling up his sleeves and doing whatever it takes that will be a blessing to all and not just a few. And then, Lord, as he begins this new path, we ask, Lord, that you will bless him to build an effective team to govern this country. We pray, Father God, if it's your will, Lord, that it will be filled with not just those who agree with him, but those that may have different opinions so that everything can come to the table. And he can understand how both sides feel about different things. 
And then, Lord, this is already one of his strengths, but we ask that it will shine even more, Lord. And that's the ability to work with those who have different views. Allow him to continue to reach across the aisle. Allow him to find common ground. Allow him, Father God, to show that it's not about him, but what can we do for the people. Allow that gift to shine even more, Father God. And then finally, Lord, we ask that you will allow his personal trials to help him always connect with those that he leads. For Father God, it's our trials that make us who we are. And it also makes us depend on you more. Because sometimes, Lord, you don't take away the pain, but you give us the strength to deal with the pain. And we believe, Father God, that his pain will allow him to connect with the people, to understand what it is to have and not to have, to understand those who may have lost loved ones, to understand those who may be struggling, trying to make a living. Please, Lord, allow his trials to be those things, Lord, that will always allow him to look for those things that's going to Again, Lord, be the best for all. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. the Lord. Pastor Darrell read from 1 Timothy 2, 1, verses 1 and 2, as he prayed for President-elect Biden. But that same scripture holds true for our current President Trump. Verse 2 says, for kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. That prayer holds true. Even if the person that we may be praying for has not yet received it. So Lord, an all-knowing all wise, all present God, you know the prayers that have gone forth, Lord, and sometimes it's easier to pray for things that we already believe in, we already trust in, we already stand behind. But God, you called us to be the example and pray for our enemies. You have called us to pray for those that different from our views. We have been called to pray for those that don't even call on you as their Lord and Savior. You have called us to pray for those that, Lord, misuse your word. Father God, you have called us to make sure our heart is pure as we pray for those whose hearts have been hardened. Father God, it is only by your strength and only by your power that you equip us and you enable us and you humble us. You anoint us to pray for those, Lord God, that may not have our individual interest at heart. So this morning, God, in the name of Jesus, I, I proudly stand in the gap for a man that does not look upon those that are less, but chooses to lift himself above. But God, I'm calling on the very God that also took Saul and changed him to Paul by giving him a Damascus Road experience. So God, this morning I pray that President Donald Trump has an encounter with you that we could not have ordained, we could not have outlined, we could not have planned for, God, but you know what it's going to take to change a hardened heart. Father God, I pray that you give him a heart of flesh. I pray that you give him eyes 
that are like yours. I pray that you give him insight and wisdom that only could have come from above. I pray that you remind him and show him that regardless of what authority he may have, there is a God in heaven that has all authority to give and to take away, to set you and to remove you, to put you in place and to replace you. We serve a God that called the people to set an example and to send a message, God, but it is you that is going to have to open the ears for him to hear that message. And Lord, so I pray for those ears. I pray that you touch his ears, his his eyes. Lord, I pray that you touch his mind. God, I pray that you touch his family. Lord, and all of those that are impacted by the ways that we may not find pleasing God, but you still created him. You are still the creator, Lord God. You are still the man that chose to allow him to be in position. And you have chosen this time to give him a new path. But on that path, God, the same way you blinded Saul until it was time for the scales to be removed, I pray in the name of Jesus for the scales to cover his eyes until he can hear from you clearly. I pray that you put people around him that he can receive your message from God because the people that he has chosen, he has easily removed. But when you put the right people in place, he does not have the authority to remove them until you say so, God. So, Lord, let him be an example of your redeeming power. Let him be an example of your power to change and to restore and to renew, God, that even we may step back and be in awe because, God, for us, we want him to suffer. We want him to pay. But, God, you are a God of grace and mercy. And if you have not given us what we deserve, then God, I pray that same grace and mercy over President Donald Trump today. Because the same way you had your way in this election, God, I pray that you have the final way in his life. In the presence of the people, I pray, amen. such as the elderly and those suffering from chronic diseases, the young, the strong, the sick, the death issues, grief issues, the local, state, and federal government, the media, the scientific population, the people watching the media looking to be informed those with mental t challenges, the homeless, the travelers, the workers in a variety of places facing possible layoffs, financial hardships, Christian missionaries throughout the world helping people who have been affected, families with young children at home with virtual learning, teachers, teaching virtually, parents who can't stay home from work, those in need of regular therapy, not through a phone, not through a TV, and those therapy sessions being postponed, no technology, business leaders making difficult decisions, our pastors, us and our church facing social distance issues, colleges, being changed from ways that people have to study, classes being canceled, 
and our frontline healthcare workers. My scripture for today is Isaiah 41. I'll give you time to get it. I'm going to read it first from the NIV version. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Listen to, listen to God saying, I will strengthen you. I will help and help you. I will uphold you, my righteous right hand. But the Good News Bible says, breaking it down a little bit more, do not be afraid. I am with you. I am your God. Let nothing terrify you. I will make you strong and help you. I will protect you and save you. Dear Lord, all-knowing, all-powerful, our promise keeper. I just thank you. I thank you for everything that you're doing today. I thank you, Lord, for our homes that have been changed into sanctuaries, school classrooms, restaurants, gyms, just everything that we have done. But most of all, I thank you ahead of time for the coronavirus being put at rest. I thank you for the lab technologists that will be able to find a cure. I know it's on the way, Lord because you promised never to leave us nor forsake us. I thank you that you have the whole world in your hand. And for that, I just say thank you. We had that a long time ago when we were little kids. He's got the whole world in his hands. Lord, I just thank you for having the whole world in your hand. I thank you that we don't know when and, and we don't need to know because we have been able to trust you since probably about this time. It may have been a whole year. We started wearing masks in March, Lord, but it's called COVID-19. So I'm thinking maybe a whole year from now when this came out that you are in charge. We're trusting you, Lord. We're, we're thanking you for the strength that you're giving us to make it through. I come to just ask you to give everybody the strength that they need to get through, whether it's virtual learning and, or whether it's on the job or in the churches, anywhere that COVID-19 may be, Lord, I just ask you to give them peace. The peace that they need to do one day at a time. The peace that they need to get through whatever they need to get through. The phone calls that they need to give them the encouragement that they need, Lord. The television shows that they need to give them encouragement. The prayers that they need to give them the encouragement, Lord. Even if it's the little prayers of thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Help me, Lord. Anything that can get them through to just ease the pain, to ease the pain of knowing that they have the virus, Lord. Be with those that are infected right now, Lord. Give them the peace that they need. I hope that they're able to see this live stream service today to just to know that God will give them the strength and he will save them. Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing, what you're about to do. Continue to be with us as leaders to do what we have to do. Give us the heart. Give us the right heart that we need, Lord, the compassion that we need to be there for any and everybody, whether they are affected by it or their family members or co-workers, just anybody, Lord. And continue to be with the young and the mental illness people who don't even understand why they have to wear a mask. Just help us to have the right words and the compassion that we need to help everybody get through this, because we will get through it. 
I declare and decree that we will get through this. We will get through this. And I just thank you with all my heart. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for all of the prayer petitioners have gone forth this morning. We're going to conclude with our prayer um, where we're going to pray for the unity of the corporate church and also within our individual churches as well. So if you would turn with me, please, to the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and we'll be reading the second through the sixth verse. And I am coming from the NIV version. Ephesians 4, verses 2 through 6. And it reads, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. Let us pray. Dear Lord, in the days before our Savior went to the cross, he made a promise that he will build his church. He promised that this building of his church was not going to be on Peter, but it was going to be upon he himself, that he is the rock. The church is the ecclesia, and is the called out, it is the bride of Christ. And your son was crucified, died, and buried, and on the third day raised from the dead for our redemption and for his church. You have called us to be a city on a hill, the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And as the called out, we are to live our lives so that others will see your light in the darkness. You have called us to be the church and to be the church and not just do church. But we are to be the ones that the world can look upon and to see a unity and harmony. We are to be as one in the same manner as Jesus is one with you and the Holy Spirit. So God, we are asking you to help us to be truly one with you. We know that denominationalism and sectarianism and racism and sexism are not what you call the church to be. But we are, we are not to be divided in our beliefs. We are not to be oppressive to one another. And we are not to be the church that is divided, that we are to be, but we are to be the church that is of one Lord, of one faith, and one baptism. So God, in this crucial time in history that you have called your church to be, in this crucial moment in history, we believe that you have called us and you have appointed us to be at the forefront of these discussions, that we are to be the ones in lead of the healing of this nation. God, we pray that we be on one accord with us, with you, to help us to be on that one accord with you. Help us to be with you. And Father, I ask you to please forgive us when we as believers allow the spirit of discord and racism and prejudices and biases bring distrust, anger, and frustration into your body. Forgive us, the church, for not always seeing and receiving each other as equals created in your image. Forgive us for judging and condemning people according to our self-righteousness. Forgive those of us who are within the body of Christ, who do not understand that when we say we can't breathe, it is not just a physical cry of discomfort, but it's a spiritual outcry because, God, you are the one who gave us the breath of life, and who is man to decide who can and cannot breathe the life? Help us tear down the barriers that separate us from each other and from you and help us, God, to be the church, to be at the forefront, to lead the conversation across the racial divide and to have meaningful conversations with each other, not degrading one another, but looking for common ground. What is it that we have in common? 
And our commonality is found in the fact that we trust you and we believe in you. So God pull us to, to be on one accord and for us to understand that the church collectively and individually that we are to be the church that you created us to be. That we are to be the church that upholds your truth. The church that rightly divides your word. The church that loves, that loves everyone. The church that not only brings correction but will also offer paths to restoration. Help us to be the church that has your agenda carrying out your purpose in the spirit of unity. Help us to be a calming presence, especially in the days to come. Help us all to be that and more that if you had called us to be. Help us to be the church that the world can look upon and see unity, respect, wisdom, direction, but most of all, the love of God. So we thank you, God. And God, for all of the prayers that have gone forth on this morning, as we pray for our, for our mental calmness, as we pray for our nation, as we have prayed for our president-elect and for our current president, and as we pray for the effects and the impact of this pandemic and for the unity of this church, God, we now submit all of our prayers to you we place them at your feet, and we thank you, God, for how you are already moving in all of those situations. And for that, we give you glory, and we give you honor. In Jesus' most precious name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for being in prayer as we came together collectively to just give and just spend this time with God. And so we need to keep praying. We can't take our foot off the pedal. So thank you. We're going to bring the praise team back as we just praise and worship. And I would just want to say to you, have a blessed, blessed Sunday until we meet again. Amen. <laughs>